Hi guys, this is Katie Bunchout and the CEO and founder of Certum Solutions here in North Carolina. We do a lot of stuff on QuickBooks training, business automation, and different tech stacks and tools that help you run your business better. Our mantra scale gracefully. So if you need help scaling your business, we're always here for you. We offer marketing, um, bookkeeping, accounting, and different services that will help support you as you grow. But that being said, today we're here to go over a neat business automation tool and database Airtable. Okay. Now with Airtable, one of the things that appeal to me, um, otherwise I would probably just default to Excel. It's a lot like Excel with a cross of access. It's what you call a relational database, which means you can have different databases that relate to one another. Don't fall asleep on me yet. It's going to be fun, but it organizes information. And not only does it organize information really well, you can actually relate to your different tables and create automated uh, processes that help your business. Now, I will go over a quick little trick that I did for our business um, at the end of this video to show you something that you can take action on today. Um, if you're interested in knowing how to run your own org chart, set up your org chart without having to use Visio or any manual tools, stay tuned, okay? But for, for today, we're gonna go over how to set a base up some neat little features of that base and how you set up relational records. Okay, for today's video, I am using our Certum workspace. We have a team plan, you have different plans and a lot like Slack, if you guys ever use Slack, they have a really great free version that will actually do a lot of this too. So check out the free version if you wanna see what Airtable's about. When you're ready to kind of do some fancy dancy stuff, take a look at the other plans. In order to set up a workspace, you wanna click this create button to the right, okay? And it's gonna say, do you wanna start from scratch or app quick start? So you can pick from start from scratch for what we're doing today. That's what, that's what I typically use, but they do have so many templates. If you're looking for a starter CRM, you're not ready to get a whole CRM software. They've got a template for that. If you're looking for something to track your donor names and you're not quite ready for donor software, they've got a template for that. They can send you a weekly summary of some of the of some of the items. If you're trying to do, you know, resource planning, you need to assign things to names that are in a different table. I've got a flow for that. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at, at some of this. So once you open a new database, it will say getting started in the right, and it will offer to import your work from other databases. You can paste data, which is super handy. The CSV function is also great, kind of similar to Excel, and the connection to Google Sheets works great. And it also does plug their templates here at the bottom. I am a little bit of a control freak, if you haven't got that about me yet. There's your spoiler. Um, so I don't use a ton of templates because I kind of know how I run things myself. And I love the fact that this software is so flexible that if I can describe it, I can typically build it. So you have something, and you have this in all databases, something called a primary key. Now a primary key is a unique field. It has to be different with every record because that's what differentiates this record from this record, this record, this record. Otherwise it'd be a whole big mess, little pedal pool of random information. Um, so you have your primary key. You can, it typically has the name column as a primary key. This is your header row right here, but you can change that primary field to something else. So something common that I use a lot is to create the auto number sequence because how much more unique that can you get other than you know having an auto numbering scheme okay this doesn't allow you to create a custom auto number but it does allow you to do one two three four five this is the kicker if you use auto number and you refer back to this table from another table guess what's going to happen it's going to grab the auto number or the primary key as the identifier so if you want to make things easy on yourself grab the name field if you can do a short name or something you know will be unique with everybody that's totally fine otherwise auto number is fine you'll just want to do something called use a lookup field what is a lookup field a lookup field is where if you grab your primary key what other fields do you want to pull over to that table so if i have you know name as a field and but every the, but on the table i'm working on i also want it to pull notes when it pulls the name that's called a lookup field, and I will demonstrate that today, okay? But for right now, we're gonna leave the primary key as the name field. And I'm just gonna put George B, 
I'm just putting in a couple records. So we've got something to put in. Jake M. Katie B. Because I have to plug myself. All right. This is a test field. Okay. Uh, you can do really cool automations like create recurring tasks. It's a little bit more inflexible than your typical task manager which can do like smart rollovers like if i need to do something weekly and i want to have it due today but once i complete it today i want it to roll the next week okay you can do that with Airtable. i would say that that's probably one of my more manual tables that i would do you have to do like a date formula to add the additional days for that weekly rollover in something called a next date field. And I'll show you how that works in a bit. The assignee, you can pick your assignee. So I'm gonna pick me, what's the status to do? And then, and like I mentioned, one of my favorite automations is having the task field that will do um, due date. And then to do this, you have to do a next due date. And then you do an add date function, which for some of my Excel friends, you love the next date or you love uh, the formula functions, right? So due date, I set that up to be a date. Next due date, actually set that up wrong. We need to set that up as a formula, okay? There you go. So for those of you that are used to using Excel and doing your if statements and the rest of it with like me, um, using the formula field is going to be, it's going to come very naturally. Um, there are other fields you can use like the roll up field and things like that. I don't think Airtable is Excel. I think there's different use cases that may work best in Airtable versus Excel. If I'm trying to do lots of summary data and trying to evaluate like number numbers and do lots of calculations, I'm probably going to default to Excel. If I'm trying to or say like data analytics, Definitely Excel, you know, some people can use Tableau, you can use Power BI, and this actually Airtable can plug into um, all of those programs as well, which is great. Um, if you're trying to organize sets of data, um, which I know, like, especially for people like me, that you know, I was a bookkeeper, I am a bookkeeper, I love Airtable, and there's a couple reasons why. And I know there's gonna be people that watch this video go, you know what, you're being a little extra, you could use Excel for that. Attachments, okay? They make it so easy to have a field that does attachments. So if I wanna do a PDF, I can download a PDF from any of these sources. I can do local files, links, webcam, Google Drive, OneDrive, Box, Dropbox, okay? I can do attachments. I love that because one of the ways that I may use it is I want a database of all the applications that I work with on my clients. I wanna know what the pros are according to me, what the cons are according to me, and if I have some PDF uh, giveaways or things that may be helpful, I want to be able to pull those at a minute's notice instead of taking a OneDrive link that I put in Excel, tracking it down and trying to find the one that I want to use. I love using the attachments field for that. Um, uh, using some sort of automation flow where like you can create, once you have your data, you can duplicate this and say filtered for complete, right? So here's another flow I do. And we don't have time to go through the nitty gritty of how to achieve all of these features that I'm talking about. But if you do have questions, reach out to our team. Um, oh, and there's plenty of information now on the Airtable website and, you know, on YouTube as well. So filtered for complete. One of the way you can do automations with an automation, you have to have a trigger and you have to have an action. That's whether you use Zapier, you use Airtable, you use anything. That's typically how it flows. When this happens, and I want you to do this, okay? That's also key to simplifying your business. A lot of times people think it's, oh, we gotta look at the big numbers and figure this things out. A lot of the small changes you make can affect the big numbers. So if you find a way to make something that was manual, something very quick and automated that requires very little work, that's going to save you money and it's going to impact your bottom line. So when we take the second, and I jump around a lot, I, I digress, I'll try to stay on target. Filter for complete. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter this one. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna filter this when my status is done. Okay, not complete, done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, um, and <laughs> I've combined these uh, from, okay, do paperwork. Let's see if we can change these names. Let's make this tasks. Get 
the mail. Make the deposits. Okay. So we're going to mark these as to do or in progress. And on this one, we're going to have it as done. Okay. Now, what does this do? Okay. It's going to filter this one down here to this view. You can achieve a similar view by using the table and the filter functions with Excel. So there's nothing special here. But where it makes things a little easier is that where with Excel, you might need to use a macro or like if you want to do Visual Basic, you'd have to do something like that. Don't ask me to do it. I haven't done it in years. You can do an automation. Now, what did we have to have, right? We had to have a trigger. You know what a good trigger is? Is when it enters a view, right? So we're going to say our trigger is when this record enters a view. So when table one enters filtered for complete view, it says make deposits that there you go. Okay. Then what do you want to do? Okay. Now, if I had my due date next due date fields built, I could make this recurring. So where if I wanted it done every day, I use my add date function and I make when this happens, add one day and create a new record that creates a task to be done in the first view. You suggested record. Okay. So step was successful. And anybody that uses Zapier, this should look really familiar. Then what do you want to do? So we've got our trigger. When the record enters a view, what do you want to do? So for this, I'm going to say create a record. And whenever that happens, I want it to go back to table one. And how do I want this to map out? And then you'll go through and you'll map it out the way you want to map it out. I want the name to say name. I want notes to say notes and so forth. Okay. So I'm doing this. I'm only doing a quick view of this. I'm not actually going through and creating anything recurring because I don't have the date. It does create another task, but in this case, it's not setting a due date, right? Ideally, with a lot of us when we're creating workflows, we want to set due dates. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit X. Okay, and then there's my results. Now, once I have this done, I can turn my automation on and I can give it a name that'll help me uh, make sure that it's working. Interfaces, I, have, I don't do a ton with interfaces yet. It's something where you can, it's like souped up dashboards that you can use using your data uh, information. They say that it enables you to kind of limit viewability a little bit um, of your database. Or one of the caveats I would tell you about Airtable is if you're dealing with security permissions. So if you've got like people that you want to have see certain tables, but not everything in your company, and you've got like power user roles, or you have regular entry roles and things like that, try your best to keep any data in that table. It should not be something that you wouldn't want to run the risk of everyone possibly seeing. So if you've got HR data, do not put it in your main workspace. Break it out by workspace. So with us, um, I will tell you right now, I keep like maybe I'll keep confidential data uh, siloed off in an HR workspace, whereas we'll keep our general basis in the certain workspace. OK, a lot of this stuff we used to keep in other programs and um, they are very helpful depending on what you like to use. You know, they don't call it a software stack for just any reason. This is more sometimes of a manual way of doing things. I mean, if you like Excel, you're probably going to love Airtable, which is me. What I really like about Airtable is that it keeps things right where I need them. I can knock things off through the day and it just flows right through. I don't have a big fancy UI I'm trying to navigate around. Um, and unlike something like accounting software where you need those controls to make sure things are posting right, um, unless you're very familiar posting in six column paper ledgers, my friend, you don't want to do your books manually. OK, but you have the flexibility and the adaptability to say if you can dream it, then you can probably build it. OK, so if there's not a tool out there yet that does exactly what you're looking for it to do and you're trying to organize some form of record or project or customer list or the rest, Airtable could very well be a solution for you. OK, it doesn't, again, replace, you know, a lot of software programs where you need those um, safety bars to keep you on track. But if it's something you'd like to put in Excel, but you need a little more oomph, and you're not ready to go full fledged access or for other reasons, like I'm on a Mac, I'm full Mac. So um, I can't even put access on here. I have to go to my virtual machine. Um, 
in situations like that, Airtable is a great thing to look at for your business and is priced really well for the small and growing businesses. That is my quick blurb about Airtable. I did not go through everything. You know how I do my two, three hour videos on QuickBooks. I am not doing a two, three hour video on Airtable, but I wanted to give you some really cool little tips on what it looks like and how you can use it. Um, I will 100% build on this uh, in the future to kind of go through some different features. Like I touched on the formula feature and I did not really go into building formulas and where you can go. Airtable has a really great uh, formula playground where you can test formulas out to make sure they'll work before you actually use it, which is really helpful if you don't wanna mess with the production base. You can also, one of my favorite things is like if we have projects, we have the timeline view right here. So on our projects, we have a start date, end date, right? Well, we can do a timeline and say, sort my projects or group my projects by the status of the project. And within each one of those statuses, I want you to show me the timeline when this project starts and when it ends. So there's different ways to look at it. If you like project management, you're gonna dig Airtable. Kanban, gallery, calendar, grid, Gantt charts, lists, you name it. So you can go sit here and organize to your heart's content and they even do forms. There's so many use cases, it's even a little bit more difficult to talk about than QuickBooks because it's almost like a blank slate. If you can imagine it and figure out a way to organize it and you kind of take a few minutes to dig into how relational databases work and how to build tables, it is extremely user-friendly for the type of product that it offers. Again, if you have any questions, you want some help getting through a formula or two, um, reach out to us. Uh, I just honestly, I don't get this excited about software very much. And we started using Airtable recently and I'm a total fan. And so I thought today I'm like, you know what? I haven't done a video in a while. I think it's time to do one about Airtable. Thanks again for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget that this is education with a little bit of entertainment, but we are not meant to replace your advisors. So make sure you go to your relevant advisors to discuss any questions you have. And I almost forgot, I promised you that I would send you a quick little trick. So let me show you how to do an org chart with Airtable. I'm going to click our manager hub where we track our employee structure, okay? And when you go here to the extension, we have set up an org chart extension. Now, mind you, this is something that we used to spend about half an hour refreshing every week or every couple weeks whenever we add new people. Now you have an org chart you can scroll in on, you can drill back on, um, I can roll up. So if I just wanna look at manager level, I can roll up my manager levels um, and the rest. And it just makes it like this dynamic living document that um, I will not, it is actually pretty kind of hard to find um, out there on the web where you don't have to do part of this manually. So this, you just enter the data into a table, you create your org chart, bada bing, bada boom, you're good. Anyway, I digress again. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to uh, hear from you guys. And if you have any feedback, tips, tricks, or you use Airtable and you'd like to share some comments or tips with us, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.